Things are heating up in Hong Kong. Local police have raided the offices of a pro-democracy newspaper and arrested the boss. The business tycoon Jimmy Lay has been charged with breaking national security laws. And that's essentially saying that he's been critical of the Chinese Communist Party. He's now facing life in prison. James Patterson, the Liberal senator, has been an outspoken critic on these issues. He's on the line. Good morning to you, Senator. Good morning, Ben. It's not looking good. It hasn't looked good for a long time in Hong Kong. No. uh, Sadly, I wish I could say I was surprised by these events, but these are exactly what everybody feared would happen after the passage of the national security law. But just because they're not surprising doesn't make them any less worrying. These are deeply disturbing developments for the people of Hong Kong and for the cause of free speech and press freedom around the world. And the new national security laws means that no one's really got any freedom, right? You say the wrong thing, you hold up a sign at a protest, you can get thrown in jail. That's essentially right, Ben. We can have a big debate about exactly what's in the national security law or what's not. But the point is, it doesn't really matter what's in it. It's whatever Beijing wants it to say is what the national security law says. And it will be applied capriciously and politically to Beijing's political opponents, as we've seen yesterday. Not only was Jimmy Lai arrested uh, and a bunch of student activists, but Jimmy Lai's two sons, who are not even involved at all in his newspaper, were also arrested. This is exactly what despotic regimes do when they're trying to intimidate people. They go after their family to intimidate them. He's a high-profile figure, so the arrest yesterday seems to signal that Beijing doesn't care about any of this criticism. Sadly, I think that's also right, Ben. Uh, They don't care about the criticism, or at least they're willing to accept the price of the criticism in order to achieve their objectives of totally stifling any dissent in Hong Kong. They're going to go after people who are prominent, not prominent, and they don't care what criticism comes. That doesn't mean we shouldn't make that criticism because we have to call them out when it happens. We have to make them bear at least some cost for doing it. Uh, But I think you're right. They're very determined. What else can we do to help? Because we've got about 10,000 Hong Kong students, migrants and graduates already in Australia who've had their visas extended by five years. But what pathway can we offer other protesters still in Hong Kong? That was a very important initiative by the government uh, to make sure that no one who doesn't want to go back to Hong Kong is forced to. They can stay here in Australia. Uh, We've also opened up extra pathways for people in Hong Kong who want to come to Australia. I want to make sure those pathways are as open as possible, as broad as possible. So anyone of any talent or ingenuity or entrepreneurship from Hong Kong who wants to come to Australia to make our country a better place and flee, frankly, what is a very changed world in Hong Kong, is welcome. Uh, But we've also got to look at consequences for the government of Hong Kong and the Chinese government for what they're doing. Uh, Australia doesn't have uh, great opportunities to have what's called uh, Magnitsky-style sanctions against political leaders. Uh, We don't have a framework to do that. But a parliamentary committee is inquiring into that right now, and I hope that we will adopt that, which will allow us to individually sanction and target corrupt officials and human rights abusing officials. Good on you for using your voice, and thank you for coming on the line. Thank you, Ben. The Liberal Senator James Patterson joining us bright and early.